Welcome back to the Navy Sports Magazine. We're presented by the Navy Federal Credit Union. And of course, fresh off one big win. Now the focus changes for the Navy track and field teams as we're joined by Director of Track and Field, Jamie Cook. And Jamie, let's backtrack a, a couple of weeks. You know, you know, when you came here and obviously you've lived it now being a coach here long enough, uh, getting that star, beating Army, so important uh, to the athletes here at the Naval Academy. Just thoughts on the way your athletes performed and and obviously bringing home a coveted star. Yeah, a couple stars for the men and the women. Um, we get one for each sport, so that's awesome. And, um, yeah, we're trying to do what we can for the athletic department and making sure our kids understand the significance of the of the meet. They did a really good job. We had a pretty dominating performance um, from both the men and the women, and a lot of key kids stepped up. So that was that was really awesome to see. And hopefully we're looking for more of the same this weekend. Just from a team standpoint, especially on the men's side, did that domination, you know, did, did that surprise you at all, or did you see your athletes really ramping up uh, and, and ready to peak uh, in, in that situation? Um, I think the the way that the meet is designed, it's intended to be close because of the scoring. Uh, we just ended up having a little few more first places than we may have anticipated, but our kids performed to, to the level we hoped that they would. So whenever you can execute at a high level, that's a good thing. It's just a matter of, you know, the score sometimes dictates – is um, it will kind of take care of itself. And if we do well, you kind of get on a roll. So those things happen there. And then it kind of um, helped over with the women as well. So the women did a lot of really good things. And uh, and that's for having a pretty young team. So that was good. Uh, you, you've been a part of this sport for a long time. And I, I, just a, a fascinating question to me, as the sport has evolved through the years, for you as a coach, Every day you challenge yourself to find things maybe that you can help your athletes with. But in terms of just training techniques, the mental, the physical, you know, how much is this sport and how much does it change in your mind uh, from year to year as you try to help your athletes be their very best, not only in meets, but that that crit critical time period leading up to those meets uh, to making sure that they can be their best? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we always try to figure out better ways to peak at the right time. Um, and uniquely we have the army Navy meet, which a lot of other programs don't put such a big emphasis on, but we do here. And then of course the Patriot league championships, which is the culmination of the indoor year. So, you know, we do have a couple of times where we have to be at our best. So you take some calculated risks. You try some new things. You always want to be better than the year before. So to stay with what worked last year, um, maybe doing the athletes a disservice, if you feel like you're just kind of status quo. So you know, we've tried to be a little bit more ambitious with some of our kids this year and um, some of their goals, but the goal is always to stay healthy when it matters most and to get them to compete at their very best, especially this year with it being hosted, you know, we host. And that's a, that's a cool thing for, for the department and a cool thing for the community. Yeah, no doubt about it. I ask the athletes this question all the time. I'll ask you, you know, why track and field for you? Where did your love of track and field come? And then obviously wanting to pursue it uh, as a coach now, uh, the, the, the way you are? Um, you know, I grew up in a small town, so was able to do a lot of different sports and, you know, had some success in, you know, a lot of different things and football and basketball and track and field. Those were my, every season, that was my favorite sport. So the, the unique part of track and field was that I was able to pick a sport where I could do multiple different athletic skills, you know, run, jump, throw, and, um, you know, going to the higher levels, you know, I could control more of my own destiny in track and field. So there's less politics in our sport. I should say less, there's still some, but there's less <laughs> politics in our sport. So, um, you know, having the ability to be a decathlete just seemed like I was just one who got bored pretty quick and I could challenge myself in 10 different ways, always find 10 different things to do and work on. So the uniqueness of a being a decathlete has helped me as a coach because you're trying to find the commonalities between the events, because you can't try and train 10 times as hard to be uh, a better decathlete. It's, it's a diminishing return. So just kind of learning some things of, um, you know, how I can control what I can control and also try to peak at certain times. It's, it's strategic, but it's challenging. And that's kind of what I, I grew a love for as an athlete. And then as a coach, I feel like I can, I can help others out and, you know, learn a lot of things from, maybe my mistakes in the past. And, you know, a very smart person once told me that they, they learn things and their goal as a coach is to put 40 year old brains on 20 year old bodies. Yeah. So um, I'm a little older than 40 now, but it still, it still holds true. 
makes two of us. I, I would say two. I mean, I, I think the individual part of it, you know, it, it, yeah, it's a team sport because there's a team score that they keep. But it, you do, you know, to a certain extent, control your individual destiny, if we like to use that word. But yeah. you, can, you can do your personal best that day. You can have a personal best time, a personal best distance. But you can still lose individually that day. How hard is that part to wrestle with? How hard was that to wrestle with for you? And now as you're trying to help athletes deal with that, because you can be great, but in this sport in particular, somebody else can be greater and you don't control that. That's a great, that's great. It's a great life life lesson as well. Right. I mean, we're all trying to do the best we can at whatever we're trying to do, whatever skill you have, whatever job you have. And um, you know, I know my, genetic potential is, is, isn't as high as others were, was, you know, so I did the very best I thought at the time. And I think my goal as a coach is to allow them to do the very best that they can. And, you know, there's going to be people that are more talented than you on the track, you know, but there's some really, really hard workers on our team that aren't the most talented kids. And we don't have maybe some of the five-star recruits that at a lot of other programs might have in the, you know, the PAC 12 or the SEC, but the will to be great is what motivates me every day f- to see these kids come to practice and just have a burning desire to do the very best that they can. So I think we owe it to them as coaches and our support staff to, to give our very best. So that's, that's the challenge. Like you said, you never know um, if your best is going to be good enough, but your goal is to still perform at your best every day. And that means from a performance standpoint, a training standpoint, a rest standpoint, you know, a recovery standpoint, all those little things that you can kind of control um, you want to mitigate those things, you know, that you can't, that you, that you can kind of take part in. So it's a, it's a game. It's really a game and you're a game against yourself and you do your part and that helps the team. And then there's also some momentum shifts in a meet and you can kind of see it. Our sport's very intriguing. There's a lot going on, especially in an indoor setting where you see a lot of different things happening at once Um, races happening every three to five minutes. And, you know, you got finals and then jumps and throws and a lot of different things going on that in a very confined setting, it's a, it's a good place to watch a track and field meet. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Uh, we did the league championships a couple of years ago. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun to be able to see everything right there. And if you're a fan, it's all uh, right on top of you. You mentioned uh, the key word. And I think in a lot of sports, 25 years ago, rest and recovery wasn't, you know, in the forethought. Uh, of what we're talking about. It was, yeah. we got to practice, we got to practice. You know, football yeah. coaches would tell you, we got to hit, we got to hit, you know. Uh, rest and recovery, though, has become such a gigantic uh, thing for athletes. To get them to take that part of it seriously, uh, what's the challenge there to make sure that they're doing that uh, as well as obviously doing their best uh, within the, their, their training opportunities that come to them? Yeah, that's a good question. Again, another a lot of good questions. I mean, you're hitting it great today. Uh, I think going back again, any coach was probably a former athlete and they're going to learn from their mistakes. Obviously, sometimes you want to go and be at your very best. So your constant balance of uh, risk and reward, right? Do I want to do more with the hopes that the benefit's going to pay off or do I want to play the safer route and be healthier? Um, over the years, we've learned and I think you know, my time at Oregon, we were very, very good at being ready at the right time. And we allowed our athletes to be themselves. So we erred on the side of being 100% healthy and 90% ready, as opposed to the other way around. So kids always want to do more because that's their nature. And especially here, these guys are so self motivated, you have to curb them back a little bit. So, uh, you know, we try to do that. And I think we communicate really well, we we offer a lot of clues with how they're doing and maybe they don't want to communicate with us verbally, but body language tells a lot. Also knowing how we periodically test with them to see how they're doing and some of their power numbers, you know, power is a big, a big word in our sport. You know, that's the basis of basically all the sprints and hurdles and jumps. So um, yeah, your, 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 your body's ability needs to regenerate or generate itself. So if you are able to do that, on a consistent basis and make sure the kids aren't overworked. They're excited to compete and they're ready to go when it matters most. I was going to say, you know what you had, obviously with your leaders coming into this season, but 
on both sides, have there been uh, some kids that maybe have uh, gone past expectations and really uh, taken the opportunities given to them and, and come to the forefront here, maybe a, a little ahead of schedule for you? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of them around. I mean, I think I can speak more of groups that are standing out. I mean, you have, you know, someone like Emily Booten, who's done a really good job of being a leader um, during cross country, winning the Patriot League championships, and now going on and setting some school records. Um, Joshua Bowman, the men's throws, stood out as a leader, um, just very consistent and an awesome job for us. Um, you know, people that Jacques Guillaume, as a sophomore, is probably looked to as one of the leaders of our team because he can do so many different things for us and just offers a level of maturity that's not usually seen as a, as in a sophomore um, people like that stand out. And then you have just some of our captains, Baines Autry has been consistent, mm -hmm. Molly Mang and Molly Chapman, Sam Kwiatkowski has come out of nowhere now thrown over 20 meters in the weight. So it's just awesome to see Alex Rizzo running 358 in the mile last week. People that have been successful in our program are still improving all the time and they're bringing other people along with them. And that's, that's really the sign of a good leader. Is there a sport in track and field that, you know, and you mentioned you, you participate obviously as a Catholic that you just watch and you marvel at people going, man, that that's tough to do. And they're really good at it. Uh, to me, a lot of it in the throwing to me, uh, I find fascinating as a fan watching it, as a media guy watching it. I've always been fascinated by all of the different levels uh, of throwing and the consistency and the attention to detail that has to go into all of it. I think we all just see the, you know, javelin coming out of their arm, the hammer coming out of their hands, but there's so much technique and everything that, that goes to that. I find that fascinating. Is there a sport that maybe you didn't try your own as an athlete, but you watch competitors and go, man, that's, that's really tough. And they're really good. Um, as I mean, I think the only event I never did was the weight throw. So that's always intriguing to me. And Coach Campbell does a great job with our athletes and developing them. I mean, a lot of these guys never threw one of them before they came here. So now right. we have multiple guys over 20 meters. Fantastic. You know, and and the women are doing awesome as well. Um, the one event to me that I think embodies just overall athleticism from us from on the track side of things is the hurdles. And that's kind of been my the area that I've spent a lot of time with and you know, those guys who can be fast, explosive, athletic, have great neuromuscular ability, and, as well as kinesthetic awareness. Um, those are some of the things and an aggressiveness that you need to have to be on the attack mode all the time. That's kind of the nature of that sport. And hopefully we've had a lot of our kids do the hurdles um, just to teach that those type of skills and attributes in an athlete. So um, every every discipline is is pretty unique, but there are a lot of commonalities between the events. And if we try to bridge the gap between finding a fit for our athletes and want them to do more, again, we have a lot of kids here who are highly motivated, who don't enjoy being bored. So if we give them more to do, they actually find more success in maybe their main event. So it's been good. I kind of treat it like a giant gym class when we do some of our practices. And I think our kids respond really well to that. I'll let you out on this. Finish the sentence for me. Navy wins Patriot League championships if. If a lot of things go right and we are ready to compete and utilize the home field advantage along with the trust in each other. I don't know that's not a very quick response, but um, a lot of it's, right, it's, 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 it's a lot, you know, it's a lot. There's a lot of teams. A lot of things can go wrong. A lot of different events. Again, we try to mitigate the risks, but we want to put our kids in the position to be successful and be aggressive. Um, that's kind of always been the nature of our, our coaching staff and our program. So we want to be aggressive this weekend and enjoy the process of, of all the hard work that they put in in front of your home crowd. Fans, you can go to NavySports.com. You can get the complete schedule and rundown for the Patriot League Championships coming up here in Annapolis uh, this week and uh, get on out there and support uh, our Navy athletes this weekend. Coach, appreciate the time today. Best of luck to you and your athletes uh, as you look to achieve uh, some more greatness uh, here in the indoor season. Appreciate the time today. Yeah, thanks, and look forward to seeing everybody out there. Take care.